now for the second part of the video I'm going to kind of go through node for node and explain what uh, what everything in the project does and uh, how it works and uh, how I how I achieved this specific look I've sorted everything into network boxes to kind of simplify the look of everything and uh, make it easy to navigate and easy to understand how everything uh, works so here first of all we have the camera in network which takes the video device in and uh, then fits it to the specific resolution that I want it to be in in this case I'm running the same resolution that I want the project to be in but I have this as a kind of an override in uh, in case the webcam I use for this project doesn't uh, uh, doesn't run the exact uh, resolution that I want it in and then I have a uh, just transform node. Actually, gonna change that for a uh, flip node. Just flip the X. Just so the webcam acts like a mirror and not a camera. You know. And here we have. Wait a minute. And uh, yeah. Uh, after that, we have uh, the first background removal, and uh, you can see here that we have a null, which just takes the last null from uh, the camera in, uh, and uh, inputs it to a NVIDIA background node, that just, it's an AI based uh, background removal, basically, and uh, comps it top of, yeah, you can see the result here. And after that, it's time for the image generation. And I have a saturation multiplier here, just to get a bit more color than uh, than you have in the original. Uh, you see, uh, there's basically no difference. But I found that uh, sometimes this one I'm wearing, like black and white or gray clothes, it gives me a monochrome picture, and I uh, I don't want that. So I just multiplied the saturation a little bit to get the desired amount of color in, in the image generation and since it is generating in the 512 by 512 I'm fitting it to the, the resolution from inside of this node uh, the selected resolution I'm fitting the video stream into the correct resolution just so everything fits because when I input the normal camera resolution it uh, kind of stretched it in a weird way that I didn't like or that just didn't overlay correctly and then I after the image generation I fit it to the original resolution and that's uh, also one of the reasons that I have uh, the variables like that oh actually I was I was wrong here in the beginning this fit is getting the resolution from the video device and uh, I'll put it here so that I can fit everything else to the original camera resolution so everything's based on the camera resolution yeah anyways uh, after this this was the problem that I was talking about earlier on is if I want to remove the background again from the from the picture as you can see here in the in the preview down here I've done that now uh, but I don't know if it's too visible but uh, sometimes it in this case, it removed some of his arm here, and that would not happen if I were to use the original mat like this. But then you get the black edges, and but then it doesn't remove any part of the uh, generated image. It just cuts out the original mat from the generated image, which usually aligns pretty, pretty perfectly. But yeah, I think it's better than having these artifacts being removed from the from the overlay. So I'm gonna remove that again. And that was the second background network. And then we have the camera overlay. And here we're selecting the original camera and just overlaying this uh, generated uh, picture on top of that. Of course. <laughs> and just a note to finish that off. And now we have some fun distortion and uh, yeah that's uh, the 
controller input distortion. So that's all running inside of a, a feedback loop and uh, we have a transform too and some lens distortion and everything is controlled from up here where I have a kind of a confusing network to be honest but uh, it's uh, combining both of the channels and I've also limited the controller axis inputs to only go in a positive direction so that I can trigger the effect like this uh, so that as soon as I move the joystick it activates uh, the effect by raising the opacity and then the displacement is uh, linked to just the exact joystick input and the same thing here with the lens distortion because I wanted the, the lens distortion to activate as soon as I move the transform so I use the same principle here to bind the lens distortion as you can see the it's activating as soon as I move the joystick actually I'm gonna lower that by like 75 uh, yeah that looks a lot better um, yeah uh, makes it look like you're moving around in a sphere and not just transforming a, a two-dimensional piece of paper and uh, here we're getting to the to the voice recognition or the prompt input uh, so I have to begin with uh, I have the audio device in up here in the control network and then I have a math that's bound to the A button of the controller uh, it's called B1 here that um, ensures that I don't accidentally pick up anything when I don't want to record a prompt and as I described earlier I also have a trigger here that activates the end session uh, to reset it every time you record a new prompt and then I have also a string of nodes to control the size of the of these crystals but I'm gonna get to that in a little bit so first of all we have we have the live transcribe running here also plugin made by the same guy that made this uh, called uh, dot simulate so amazing creator that does <laughs> he's uh, like absolutely crazy I, I i couldn't even imagine how he got the, all of this to work but anyways uh, we have the prompt here and here we have a, a chop that uh, is uh, referenced here uh, for the input of the prompt and then here we have a uh, a dat that gets input into this text node. Yeah, those text nodes down here, they're just uh, running a constant, like a ladder animation that's uh, switching between them to get the dots to animate, which I thought looked pretty cool. And then for the, the look of this prompt box or whatever, first of all, we blur the text. Uh, node and put a, put a threshold on it uh, to get kind of a, a big bounding box around it and then we have one of my favorite nodes here in touch designer uh, the emboss node or at least my favorite uh, favorite top node and then we're comping that uh, on top of the original threshold and then we have a, another feedback loop with displacement based on just on random noise to get it to wiggle like that kind of a pixel sorting animation and then some more noise some pretty large noise just multiplied with the source just to make it a little less symmetrical and then just a level to modify the opacity of it then i'm comping the, the text on top of that and then now we get to the render network uh, the 3d cubes so we have a sphere that's uh, very low resolution then just a transform to uh, rotate them and then we have a copy to uh, yeah you get five copies of the same same one and then for the for their movement outside of the rotation we have a noise that's set to a pretty high period to get them to kind of not move at the same time but uh, 
still like have some uniform movement, uh, so it feels like they're kind of pulsating with each other. Then the uh, line material, and then uh, yeah, I don't know why I did it like that. Uh, I should just get the line going <laughs> there uh, and remove the material. Uh, there we go. Looks exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, and then of course a camera and a light and the level to just kind of raise the brightness of it. Uh, I have transform bound to the same same button uh, as uh, the thing that's uh, the button that's activating all of the audio, uh, and that's also running a threshold for the last effect that I'm gonna get to. But uh, yeah, so they get. Uh, they get transformed, but not just by the like audio activation button. Also by this one uh, that's uh, running based on the audio device in the microphone. So we have a filter to smooth out the effect. But as you can see, when I'm speaking, uh, it get transformed uh, on the uh, y-axis too by my uh, by my voice. Uh, which I thought uh, brought kind of a more connected feeling to uh, to the input. Uh, I don't know if that makes any sense, but uh, yeah. So then I just comp them behind the, behind the prompt box, add some subtle glow, then use this level node. Uh, so for the prompt animation, the overlay uh, that I do over your silhouette. First, I'm going to change <laughs> change to a prompt that's uh, more concrete than <laughs> whatever has been input now. Uh, so I'm just going to go to Jeff Goldblum uh, again. And now, uh, as you saw, when I change the prompt, or when I I can't speak when I'm uh, when I'm showing you, but that kind of uh, pixelated uh, striped animation. It's uh, based off of uh, just the a threshold that's running on top of uh, the original uh, cu uh, cutout picture of the image generation after I've uh, cut it out of the background. Selected here uh, and connected to a threshold that's uh, running on a trigger that's uh, connected to the original button press uh, of the audio activation. And uh, that's because uh, I think a threshold looks uh, looks better than just an opacity slider, because it gives gives the feeling of like growing out of the brightest point, as you can see here. Kind of not a uniform grow, uh, but uh, it's growing from a just now it's growing from the uh, white part of my chair. But yeah, I think that looked uh, a lot better than just changing the opacity. And then I have a level to also change the opacity because sometimes the threshold didn't want to cooperate because I'm softening it a little bit. So sometimes it uh, gets white even though I'm on the one if the picture gets super bright or something. So I'm also sliding the opacity. And then I'm uh, using a lookup node to uh, change the color to light blue because that looked good and sci-fi-ish then some bloom for the glow and then I'm using a time displacement which is uh, one of my other favorite features in touch designer that uh, on a black pixel it uh, sets the time back by 30 frames and uh, on a white frame it's uh, completely live so I have a ramp here uh, that's on 0 0.11 uh, to get it uh, super repeated and then a transform just to get it scrolling up but when you hold down the button it scrolls down to kind of differentiate from the in and out animations of the effect and then I have also a noise uh, that's not animating but it's uh, limited uh, and the value offset of the quantization is uh, animated constantly upwards and when I input that into a displace node you get this kind of super nice uh, pixel uh, ramp <laughs> I don't know what to call it but that is what gets it so nice and distorted when uh, the effect is showing yeah uh, I just love the look of that 
and then uh, we get to the like final comp where I first overlay the effect and then overlay the prompt box uh, and then here is just my little uh, developer mode which I can show it's just um, a screen grab of the, <laughs> of the screen that I have uh, the two uh, command prompt windows open and I'm just crudely comping them over the input yeah I'm gonna change that to one and that's the entire project and uh, just a big null in the end uh, and a uh, window to output it to a specific monitor that's all of it it took uh, took a long time to build all of this uh, and it took uh, kind of even longer to organize it all because i when i first built it it was a complete mess so i've spent a lot of time organizing it into network boxes and making it look good and presentable yeah uh, this is uh, my entire ai mirror uh, thank you for watching the video you should uh, also check out my instagram uh, where i post more just previews of uh, different visuals that i do because this is a very different project from what I'm usually doing. Usually doing more abstract uh, music visualizers and concert visuals and yeah, uh, more abstract things at least. But yeah, thank you so much for <laughs> watching the video if you watched this whole way through, which probably no one did, but uh, if you did, thank you so much. I hope I could uh, enlighten you in uh, one way or another. I hope you learned something from watching this, from listening to me rambling and walking through my project in this way. I'm Felix, FE3Elix, and uh, please like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching.